I'll use my phone. Remember, you want the spotlight view here. So, see here on the two dots, you're live on YouTube right now. Okay. Oh, it's just all up there. Okay, cool. All right, you're live right So, is there a way to see the chat? Yeah, but I would go on camera right now because I'm okay. literally broadcasting at this point. Awesome. Hello, everyone. I'll get started. I just wanted to bring up my notes. First time I've done this live. You should also introduce yourself to folks who don't know who you are. Exactly. All right, so I am Sean Whitmore. Um, I'm gonna be talking about fitness and jujitsu for today. And just a couple of things about myself. I am a personal trainer. Um, I am NASM certified National Association of Sports Medicine, uh, certified personal trainer. I've studied neuromuscular stretching, speed agility, quickness training, MMA conditioning, balance training, weight loss specialist. Uh, I have a degree in kinesiology as well. Um, and I'm a black belt under Yogi. Um, so a couple of things today. I, I feel like my class is going to be very informational. We'll have a couple of movements and things like that. But I want to discuss like what types of exercises and stuff you should be starting off with and what you should be doing. Um, and even if you have been exercising for a long time, um, why you want to come back and do your kind of self-assessment for um, the, the, the squat and, and what stretches and exercises you'll have to do. Um, so why fitness outside of jiu-jitsu? Um, there's a lot of movements that we do in jiu-jitsu. Uh, we have to keep our arms in close. You know, if your arm is extended, it's going to get hyperextended. So we practice keeping our arms in very close. Our, our necks are always getting attacked from chokes. We, so we keep our shoulders up nice and high. Um, so th there's a lot of things that we do and just anything that we do over and over and over again, or maybe you work at a desk uh, and, and you, you, you are postured a certain way or you play a certain sport and you're pitching or field goaling or whatever you're doing, the repeated motions will start to create muscle imbalances um, and which can also lead to injury. Uh, as well as a lot of pain along the way. So uh, what I want to do today is address some of these issues, how to find them, um, and then depending on what issues you're finding, uh, what stretches and exercises that I would recommend. Okay, so some of the uh, equipment that we're going to need, we will need it today. Um, I'll be demonstrating with, with what I have. Um, uh, but, but these are some examples uh, or ideas that you can add to your home workout arsenal. So foam roller, uh, big bonus if you have a percussion type instruments. I like the Hyper Ice, uh, hashtag not sponsored. Uh, they have Hyper Spheres. You can also go on more affordable routes. Um, you can use like a rolling pin. You're only limited by your own creativity, um, but I'll, I'll show you what I have today a little bit later. Um, some resistance bands. Um, I'll show you in a second too, once we get to the exercises, the ones I'm talking about, they have like the ones with the handles and you may need some of those a little bit later, um, but the ones I would recommend are like those, you see them in physical therapy, uh, these loot resistance bands. So we'll talk about that. Um, moving on next. Oh, one more, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the Swiss ball or those uh, fitness balls. Um, or some of the exercises that we'll need. Okay, so some things I'll be covering in the future, kind of the wide scope, we're gonna zoom out really far and uh, just what I wanna cover through this course. So the pillars of fitness, we're gonna talk about nutrition, right? And there's some things I can talk about in the realm of fitness and exercise, but if you wanna get more to specifics, I would recommend looking uh, for somebody who is a specialist, a nutritionist. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about some of the basic ideas and how it relates to jiu-jitsu and um, if you want to compete, some ideas for that as well. Um, cardiovascular endurance, uh, weight training, and under that I have stretching as well. We're going to cover a lot of that today and uh, rehabilitation as well. So those are kind of two subcategories under weight training. Um, supplements, um, that'll be way later. 
And if you are interested in personal training, that is something that I do as well. Uh, we can set up a web course or something, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, if you will, um, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, so some, if you do that and have uh, accountability, I'll talk about how to stay motivated, checking your form, and, and giving you more specific exercises uh, if, if you want me to, if you want me to personally assess your squat um, or anything else really, versus kind of doing it on your own. Okay, so what we're going to cover today, uh, the squat assessment slash screen. Right? If it's me doing it, I'm going to call it the assessment, but if you're doing it on yourself, you're going to be calling it a screen. So just some semantics, but I want to, vocabulary is very important to me. Um, so addressing some issues with the overhead squat um, using stretching and foam rolling, right? So as you go through the exercises, you'll be able to tell um, what's overactive and what is underactive, okay? The exercises I would recommend as well. Um, and again, foam rolling and exercising, all these things will help prevent injuries from occurring, um, better range of motion, and just moving more efficiently. All these things we do want for jujitsu. And as we go, um, we'll be talking about myofascial release. I usually just call it foam rolling for short. Um, those are good to do before you work out, right? So if you come into class early, I highly, highly, highly recommend doing these or before you work out is an excellent way to warm up. Um, I will also do it during the workout if something is feeling a little bit off. Say you're doing barbell squats and you're, you're going down for your squat and you feel some kind of knee pain, I would stop your set, foam roll, try it out. And generally, it'll feel better. If it doesn't, there might be some underlying issue. I would, I would recommend talking to your doctor at that point. Um, good for after your workout as well. Studies have shown that it can help you with recovery. So if you're training every day, every day, or even three times a week, two times a week, um, it'll help you feel not as sore. And again, help with injury. So I am a big proponent of foam rolling. If you don't know anything else from today, I just want you to know that foam rolling exists. That's probably number one. Okay, so um, overhead squat, we're gonna get into that. So a couple of things um, for the squat. There are a lot of variations and a lot of um, different ways to do it. But for today, because I'm trying to see how the body is moving, um, I, I'm, I'm using strict lines here, okay? So uh, the way I like to explain it, I want my feet about shoulder width apart um, and my toes pointing forward. Wherever my knees are pointing, right? That's where I want my toes to point as well. So if I have my toes pointing out, my knees pointing in, um, and you can't help that motion without feeling very tight or very awkward, uh, that is a very telling sign. So we want our feet pointing forward, right? And again, it's not bad if our feet are out. That's just, if you're doing that specifically for a certain exercise, uh, that's totally fine. But for these assessments, again, toes pointing forward, okay? So as we're descending, um, moving up from the feet up to the knees, right? We don't want the knees buckling in. Um, we want the knees pointing out, all right? Um, next, kind of the, the hips and the chest, right? Is that what I have? Oh, one more. So I'll kind of turn to a side angle. When you make your descent, you want to make sure that the heel stays on the ground. When I instruct a lot of new people who haven't really done a squat before or have been not too familiar with it, um, I give them the wiggle test. So as you go down for your squat, you should be able to wiggle your toes. Right? If I'm on my toes, my heels come up, I cannot correctly perform the wiggle test. So to give you another angle, we'll be here. I can see it. I can scoot forward right about there. Okay, so as I squat down, right, I have a wiggle test, right? And while we're talking about the, the, the toes and the feet too, let's talk about the knees, right? If I glance down, I should be able to see my toes. If my knees eclipse to my vision, of the toes, I'm, my knees are too far forward, right? So it shouldn't be like you're sitting in a chair, okay? Next thing, keeping your back straight, right? And there's two things I wanna cover here. There is overarching and rounding, okay? So as I squat down, my back should be straight. I don't overarch it, 
like I'm a Instagram model or over rounding on that too. So really try to pay attention to how your body is feeling. If you're a very visual learner, um, I would recommend using a mirror if you have access to a full body mirror. Or it, once we do go back to the gym, um, a lot of the, the fitness rooms will, will have a full body mirror. So whatever you can at the moment. Next, I wanna talk about not leaning too far forward, okay? So the way I like to explain this one is when you're doing the squat, uh, you should be able to see my chest the entire time. So the way I like to explain it, if I'm Superman and I do my squat, you should see, be able to see my logo here. And as I squat down, you should still be able to see my logo. If I'm falling too far forward, then something is incorrect. And we'll talk about that as we go. So next thing, as you squat down, make sure your chest is pointing forward. Moving on down the list. Okay, so we don't always have to keep our arms up and above our heads this way. Um, but for the assessment, I want to see how the back and the shoulders and the arms are, are affecting the movement, okay? And <laughs> admittedly, this is one of the ones I've always had a hard time with because of the way we are constantly for jiu-jitsu. Um, so please excuse uh, my poor form on this one. Just know that it's an ongoing battle for me. So if we have our arms up and straight, as we go down, right, I should be able to form a wiggle test, make sure my toes are pointing forward, right? And I don't want my elbows to fall down this way. If you're feeling any tightness in the back, I'm for sure, was uh, we're gonna talk about some stretches and exercises for all of those. So one more time, just to reiterate, and uh, if you're a very visual learner and not an uh, auditory one, I do have a slideshow. I was going to try to present that, but um, I'm kind of working things out as we go. So if you're interested in that, leave a comments uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll email it to you whenever I have a chance. So anyways, reiterating everything, making sure your toes are pointed forward and as you squat down, I wanna be able to drive my weight through my heels. Uh, make sure my knees are pointing forward. I don't want them to buckle in. Um, my, my knees should not eclipse my toes as I make the descent. Um, oh, I'm not overrunning the back. Oh, so over, overarching or overrunning. I want to try to keep the back nice and straight. Then as I go down, keep my arms up nice and straight. If they fall down or if they start to bend, then that will be counted as a fault, okay? So I will do 10 repetitions and what I'm gonna give you is a front view, a side view, and a back view. And if, you, if I were to do this live with you, I would take a bunch of notes, seeing how your body is moving and what discrepancies these are. There's many more, but these are the main ones that I see on like 90% of people. So 10 repetitions here, arms up and above the head. I'm gonna squat down for one, Two, I can feel my back wanting to arch. Three, four, five, six. I notice my toes are starting to point out a little bit. I went for a run today, so that will explain some tightness. Nine, and I skipped it to numbers. Ten, I notice my shoulders are coming up as well. So definitely take notes, take, take a list of what discrepancies you felt, um, and this will help you kind of make your own personalized workout to help with a lot of these problem areas. So again, toes pointed forward, arms nice and straight. As I go down, one, two, you might be able to see it. My back is really one to round. Four, five, four. If I come down this way, make sure you're not looking like that. I lost count, honestly. <laughs> Nine and it's a little bit harder to tell on yourself, but and I didn't list it for today, but also try to notice if you favor one side and the back view is going to be easiest to tell if this is happening. I might try to, unless I'm doing that already, uh, like I said, it's really hard to feel this on yourself. So having an outside feedback will, will help you with, with that type of information. So we're here, arms up. Nice and straight, toes forward, coming down one, 
two, three. You might notice my shoulder is wanting to come up. Five, right? Sometimes you'll see this. I'm exaggerating it just to kind of make a point. Eight, nine, and ten. All right. So that's the squat assessment. And just to reiterate one more time, we're going very quickly. Toes forward, knees pointing in the same direction as the toes. Making sure my, my weight's going through my heels. Uh, back is straight, not arched, not rounded. Chest up, arms nice and straight. Okay. So let's go into some of the problem areas you might have felt. Let's talk about the toes turning out. So if you find yourself as you're squatting down, you can't help but your feet coming out. The three stretches I would recommend is some kind of calf stretch, hamstrings for sure, and your TFL, tensor fascia latte. Um, and I'll show you what stretch to do for that. So first one, calf stretches. There are a lot. Um, and if you've taken Vivian's class, I'm sure she's done the downward dog. But that's probably one of my favorite ones to target the hamstrings and the calves right away, okay? So the way I like, I'm not a professional yoga instructor, but from what I know, you go to the tabletop, you try to keep your legs straight by flexing your quad muscles here, trying to drive your heels down to the ground. So that's one way to do kind of two birds with one stone. Um, there is the very common, if, you, if you're out for a run, there's a lot of curves that you can use. If you're at a jiu-jitsu gym, just finding a wall. Toes on the mat, the wall, and kind of lean your weight forward, okay? So that's another way. Hamstring stretch, we have the basic sit and reach. Um, and just know that the both feet forward and one foot out, you'll have different angles and different way your muscles are gonna to respond to that. So I recommend you both. Okay. Before I go to the T uh, TFL stretch, I wanna talk about foam rolling these two. Um, and as we talk about some of the other muscles, if you've never foam rolled before, I'm probably gonna guess that you felt, uh, it, those are gonna feel very, very intense. Um, but these ones, it depends on the person. The calves uh, are very varied. Um, I've seen a very wide range where the slightest touch on somebody's calf, uh, it's a lot of pain. And some where you put a ton of pressure um, and they don't feel so much, okay? So if you are in the category where you feel a lot of tension in your calves, in the slightest touch, uh, good news for you, the foam roller is the cheaper option. So let me grab that really quick. So for the foam roller, pretty simple. You'll have it parallel to your hips. I like to start at the uh, tendon here and putting my hands by my hips. And if you are very, very tight here, it won't take a whole lot to roll over. Honestly, for me, uh, I've never felt a lot here. And I always felt that I was actually very flexible here until I started using the And I'll get that into it. I'll get into that in a second. If this is your only option though, um, you can apply more pressure by crossing your feet, getting your hips off the ground and rolling back and forth. And before we go into the next stretch, if you are feeling a lot of tension, right? As you go, you'll feel your muscles start to relax over time. If you're in a hurry, I'll probably do 30 seconds minimum. Uh, but when I have a lot more time, I, I usually spend a good amount of time on, on my problem areas. So one of the things, I don't know the actual term, if you talk to a massage therapist or if you talk to a, a chiropractor, they use a totally different term, but the one that I've always used uh, is, is called flossing, right? Not the dance, uh, not with the teeth, but with the muscle here. So um, when you do find a particularly tough point, what you're going to do, let's say, it, for me personally, I don't feel too much here, but for the sake of, Let's say I feel a lot of pressure here. What I'm gonna do is just flex the joint that controls that muscle. So to control the calf, 
I use my foot, right? So I'll point my toes back towards me and point my toes away, going back and forth, right? So this will help relax the muscle and, and, and increase the circulation, right? If you want to get into the deep sciences of it, you can. There's a lot of good resources, but uh, I, I don't want to go too much into that today. Um, so we'll talk about flossing for some of the other techniques as well. Um, so that's the calf. Next is the hamstring. And again, for me, this one, I never, I never really felt a whole lot. Um, I, I, this one, I would say like 95% of the clients and, and the students that I've worked with, they don't feel a whole lot here, right? But uh, this will give me an opportunity to show some of the other tools that I have in the back. So hamstring, if, if the, the full molar is all you got, something's better than nothing. So let's start here, right? I'm gonna, again, kind of prop myself up on my hand. Again, um, I wanna be starting close to a joint. So for our calf, we started near the tendon, near the ankle. Um, here, I like to start a little bit more towards the hip. You might find if you are towards the knee, as you roll away, uh, my body weight isn't over my hamstring. So as I start, right, see now, it's my center of gravity is more over the point is what I'm looking for. Um, if you do feel a lot of pressure, if you are in, in the 5%, not to say that you're weird, but I just don't see it very often. If you do feel a whole lot, you can use this foot on the ground to help alleviate the pressure, right? Again, if you need more, you can cross your feet, no problem, right? Or getting into kind of this figure four pose. I feel like my leg doesn't get in the way, but as much as you can to put more pressure down into the leg, right? Going through the entire range of motion. Um, this one's tough to do that flossing technique that we talked about a little bit earlier, but if you do have access to a massage table, what I found is kind of doing it at the edge of the table so I can get flexion in my knee to bend my knee and straighten my knee to get that same effect. That's the best way, but um, other than that, maybe, maybe you can be more clever than I can on that, but um, that's the only way I want to do that. So foam roller on those two, a lot of variant uh, experiences that you may feel, but let me show you a couple of other things that I have as well. Don't drop it. Okay, so these are a couple of other tools that I use. This one is also a foam roller. This one is a little bit older. I try to charge it. I also have a downstairs neighbor, so I haven't been able to use it a whole lot myself. Uh, battery is almost dead. So this one, you'll see, vibrates. And when I use this one, I feel the points attached to tension a lot more. Um, again, we can get to the science of it. I'm not gonna get into it today, um, but there's a lot of material on there. Uh, this pretty much kind of a spark noted version, if you will, uh, increases the circulation, and increases the range of motion, and, and gets to a deeper level of the muscle through the vibration. Um, so you have that option. Um, and you, you do the same thing that we just did with the regular one, except turn it on. If you have downstairs neighbor, uh, maybe talk to them before you use it, or just use it at the gym. Um, these two, um, so I'll talk about this one first. This one, I didn't get this one for a long time. A lot of people like to use the cross ball uh, for the same exercises that we did with this one. Um, it's a little bit more pinpointed. Um, I, I never liked that one for whatever reason, um, but personal preference. It's, it's out there. I'm not gonna show you how to use it today, um, except for this one. So this one, again, just like this guy, it's, it's going to vibrate once I turn it on. The nice thing about these ones in particular, there's a lot of things on the market, sorry, I'm not sponsored, I promise. Um, there's a lot of things on the market with this one um, that, that, that uh, it, it's quiet is, is the main point, right? I don't know if you can hear it, maybe not, right? And it has, these ones have three different levels, level one, right? So there's a lower vibration, level two, higher vibration, and then level three is the highest. Um, the one that I like the most, this one, because my downstairs neighbor will never know that I use it unless I put it on the ground and use it like a hammer, which is silly. Um, I can use this when I'm on the couch, right? I don't need to position myself on the floor. Uh, it's, it's very compact and I throw it in my gym bag. Again, hashtag not sponsored, uh, but you could. We'll leave that there. Um, so turning it on, 
we have three levels, one, two, three, right? And just finding the muscle, right? I, I usually use this one before I go run. The one time I didn't, I got a very bad calf cramp um, for in, in the last day. It gave me issues through that entire week, so my running regimen was, was totally off. Um, so I highly recommend foam rolling before uh, you exercise. But this one you would just use right on the muscle, right? You can use it on the hamstring. And one thing I'll say about this one, uh, we have the, 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 I call it the sandwich theory because the way I explain it is if you make yourself a sandwich, I mean, it's good, it, it, it's a sandwich, but if somebody else makes you a sandwich, it is such a treat, right? So you can use this on yourself, it'll work great. Um, but if someone else does it for you, it's, it's something else. So good on your own, but um, better if you have a partner. So, and then there's a lot of other ones on the market. Again, this one is a little bit quieter. Uh, there's a Tam Tam, but that one is like, I, I think you measure the decibels on it. Uh, so even if you have a downstairs neighbor, they'll probably hear it um, without getting contact to the ground. Anyways. We'll, we'll talk about all these tools as we go through. So, went on a long tangent. If your toes point out, right, the ones that we want to get, calf and hamstring, right? Another one that we want to get is the TFL, right? Um, the stretch that we're going to do, so the elongating stretch that we're going to do. It's like a, um, a lat stretch this way, except we're going to take a backwards step here, right? I'm going to turn towards the back step and then start the lean. So very familiar, very similar to one that we do, but um, this one has never really been a problem for me. Uh, so I don't feel it here a whole lot, but um, it, it, you might feel it more than I do. If you want, you can use the hypervolt more on that muscle right here, um, but we can use the foam roller and I'll talk about that one in a little bit. Uh, it's not specifically for that muscle, uh, but I'm sure you can work your, work your angles. Okay. Moving on. How am I doing on time? I'm doing great. Excellent. So if your knees move in, right? This is another very common one that I see, especially in jiu-jitsu, in closed guard or triangles. Uh, uh, a lot of people try to buckle their knees in. Um, I see this a lot in females as well. I'm not sure why very common in females, and a, a lot of runners as well will get this. Um, so toes out, knees in, this is a very dangerous combo. Uh, so I recommend all of these exercises and getting on it right away before you have any serious issues with your knees and possibly even your lower back. Um, so if your knees are buckling in, some of the stretches I would recommend would be the adductors, right? So that's gonna be the inside of the thigh. Um, let's look at the foam roller first. So this time we're gonna have it parallel to us here. I'm gonna have my leg out. I'm gonna start right by my knee and go towards the groin and back leg. Okay, I'm still on the screen. So going back and forth here. From my experience, I feel this one a little bit more as I get closer to the joints. Um, so that's how you would do it for the foam roller, having it parallel off to the side. If you do feel a lot of pressure on this one, you can bring your knee down to the ground a little bit, right, to help kind of alleviate some of that pressure. All right, same thing with the, if we were using this as a little cross ball, right, it would be the same thing, except it's just, yep, I feel that. Ugh, I feel that a lot. It's going to be a lot more of a final point. Um, oh, while I'm on that, while I was feeling a lot of pain in that one, um, the vibration does help uh, build the pain in some sense. So if you are very sensitive, uh, that is another benefit of a percussion type instrument. Um, if you have the hyper roll, super, super easy. Just using it on the inside of the leg, you can eat popcorn with one hand and then hyper roll in the other. Um, again, I use this one all the time. Okay, so you would want to get the inside of the leg with the foam roller. Next, 
The hamstrings, we already covered that one. The calves, we already talked about that one. And uh, TFL as well. So just to review, uh, I'm going to find a wall, feet on the uh, wall and bring my weight forward. A good hamstring, uh, calf stretch. You can do a standing reach, although I prefer the ground. Um, and then the TFL stretch, stepping back, rotating towards the step back, with the, the leg goes back and reaching here. Okay, bus, the main thing I wanna talk about this one, I really wanna highlight is the lateral tube walking. So let me go grab that really quick and make myself some space. So this is the one I'm talking about. Move it closer to the camera so you can see, right? And usually they'll come in a pack. Uh, different colors will represent different resistance. Um, so let's get started. So if your knees are buckling in, right? Uh, two things can be happening. You have muscles that are overactive on the inside of the leg or the muscles that bring the knees out can be underactive, okay? So other than the resistance of the band, let's say uh, you lost all your other ones or they broke or, or whatever reason you end up with only one, there's different ways that you can increase and decrease the resistance with only one instrument, with only one tool. Maybe black on black is a good idea. We'll try it out. So the first way we can do it is right at the knees. I'm um, sorry, sorry, right below the knees, right? I don't want to be on the joint just below it, um, so we have the highest leverage point, right? So again, I want my uh, toes pointed forward and I'm gonna do a side step out to here. And you should feel it in the side of your butt. This is activating the gluteus medius if, if you can. Um, if not, it's gonna be in the side of your butt, right? So usually I would recommend, you can go the length of the mat if you wanna challenge yourself. I would say 15 to 20 repetitions uh, in general. But a side step out here and a side step back. A couple of things to watch out for this one. Make sure when you're going to one way, you're not counteracting the body going the other direction, right? Um, going off of Gumby's guard passing, right? You wanna make sure that you have good posture, right? And you have good balance. As soon as my head and shoulders go over my hips in one direction, I'm gonna be off balance. And we're not gonna be targeting the muscles that we want to be, all right? So, Head and shoulders over your hips, nice wide base. We're gonna step and come together. Step and come together. I like to use lines to make sure I'm not drifting one way or, or, or another, or too far forward or too far back. Um, and every once in a while, just check to see where your feet are, make sure they're not coming out and make sure your knees are not buckling in. So that's the first one. If you only have one uh, band or that you're, you kind of surpassed the heaviest resistance band that you have, you can bring it down to your ankles. Yeah. Right? So it's the same motion. Again, making sure you're not leaning too far forward. Toes are not coming out. You're staying forward. Right? So it's the same thing. Um, last one. I didn't learn this one until a little, bit, a little bit recently, which is pretty cool. So we get at the knee, ankle, and then right at the knuckles, of your feet. Let's see if I can do this. I don't know if I can. There we go. So we have right up in the uh, knuckles of the feet. This is gonna be the highest resistance with a given band that we have. Oh, okay, this is very tough. I happen to grab the highest resistance, but um, this one I would highly, highly recommend, uh, recommend doing if your knees are buckling in this way here. Or <laughs> since it is almost summer and you want to work extra glutes for whatever reason, this is also another good exercise to have in there. Okay. I also want to talk about this Swiss ball here. So this is a good training tool to use if you are having trouble with your squats. All right, so if you feel like you're having a hard time keeping your heels down on the ground, 
or what have you. I will set this up against the wall. I will want this just below my shoulder blades. So if it's up here, as I come down, it's gonna come up into a weird position. So just below the shoulder blades, and I'll, I'll see if I can change angles. Uh, we'll see, kind of learning all this as we go. Right, so just below the shoulders, and my feet are gonna be slightly forward, right? So as I go down, this, is, this will help you take a lot of resistance off of your body weight squat, so you can really uh, uh, focus on your form, right? Form over anything else. Just as you just do, technique is gonna surpass using strength. Strength definitely does make a difference, for sure, right? But technique, you always want to get a good handle on that. So this is a good way to hone in on your squat form. Also, we can incorporate this band with our squats. So if you are having a hard time keeping your knees from buckling in, this band not only gives you extra resistance to help build that muscle, but it gives you a good uh, physical kinetic feeling on, on what's happening with your knees during your squat. So here, toes come forward as I go down. So I have to resist the band pulling my knees in. I want to be pushing against that, or sorry, pulling against that as I go down and as I come up. Let's see if I can play with this camera a little bit. How are we doing? So if I turn it, you can see our setup too, it's pretty cool. It's there. Okay, so we have this here. All right, I'll set this up at the knees. And hopefully at this angle, you can see my feet are forward. Uh, this is just below my shoulder blades. As I go down, you should get on my shoulder blades. I mean, you just love it. I don't really want it on my head. I come up. Not letting your knees start to win. Going against that resistance. So another good exercise you can do, even if you are proficient in all the other movements, I would still recommend that one. Okay. And oh yes, this is also a good tool to use. Oops, there we go. So working on your bridges, um, let's go over the form first and we'll talk about how to use that also. So I'll sit on it, walk my feet forward so that my shoulder blades are on the ball with my head resting on it. Uh, I want my feet flat. This is a good way to practice driving through your heels, right? So I'm gonna bring my toes off the ground and focus on a bridge. You're really squeezing my glutes uh, to make sure that they are the active muscle in this exercise. Bring them back down, focus on squeezing the, uh, squeezing the glutes, bring your hips up. Your, your, your torso and your legs should be straight. So if you're down a little bit this way, uh, we still have some ways that we can go. All right, to give you a different angle, let's go here. I'm gonna walk forward. Just do that a little bit so you can see my toes. Toes forward, I don't want them coming out. I'm gonna pull them off the ground to really emphasize driving through the heels. I'll rest my head on the ball, bridge up, and come back down. Bridging up, making sure my hips are completely straight, driving with the glutes, um, and this is what I'm looking for, okay? So the third exercise I would recommend is the bridges uh, with uh, the band. Bring this over. Just below the knees, walking forward. Right, look, it's gonna be pulling your knees in. You wanna resist against that. Bridging up, making sure we're as high as we can go. Coming back down, 
making sure you're driving through the heels. All right, if that's the first time you're doing this variation, I would recommend first doing it without the band, just to kind of get your bearings with it, and then throw it in once you're comfortable. Oof, building up a sweat. Who would have thought exercising would make you sweat? All right, so just to reiterate, if your knees are buckling in, you're gonna do the lateral tube walking to the side, number two, the squat with the ball. And then when, once you get used to that, adding in the band, number three, the bridge with the ball. And once you get used to that, using the band as well. Any questions? I don't know if I can see the comments on here. Okay, let's talk about if the heels are coming up. This one's a pretty easy fix in my opinion. So if your heels are coming up, it might be one, you didn't know any better. And that's usually what it is from, from what I see. But if you know that you're supposed to keep your heels on the ground and you cannot keep your heels on the ground without any other issues, what I often see is once I tell them to do that, I see an arch in the back, right? So if, if you're having trouble, it's like, it's like those old cartoons where they push one thing in and then another thing comes out in another direction. So if you're running into that issue, the primary thing are gonna be pads. So we talked about that. Uh, you have your array of tools. I personally like the Hypervolt best on that one, but uh, whatever is in your price range and whatever you prefer. Uh, almost, almost come up. No, pretty much that's it on that one. Easy fix, but still very common. Okay, lower back arching here. This is usually a sign that these muscles here are overactive and the muscles here might be underactive. So let's talk about foam rolling the hip flexor. Um, this one, it's a very subtle motion. It's, it's not a large surface area. So right where my hip bends, uh, that's kind of the area that I'm working at. So that's a good way to kind of measure if you're getting the right spot. I'm gonna bend my knee, bring my hip up, sorry, bring my knee up to see where this is. Take mental note of that. And I'm gonna drive my hip down, kind of like you're doing a sprawl almost. And I'm working on that angle here. You might have to tilt, depending, kind of roll back and forth. Right? You can keep this foot off the ground to add more pressure. Okay, so there's that one you can use any of the other tools, right? If you're using this one, uh, make sure you use the bathroom first, otherwise you might pee yourself because it's really close to the bladder. Whenever the chiropractor does this one on me, uh, I usually have to run to the bathroom because it's right there. Um, but right on that hip flexor, if you find yourself seated a lot, I play a lot of video games, so I have this issue, or if you're at the desk a lot, or you drive a lot, um, this is a very common problem. So hip flexor, I would recommend for the toes coming off the ground. And, oh no, I'm sorry. Oh no, no, I'm right, I'm right. I'm getting ahead of my notes. Oh, okay, so yeah, if you're lower back in position, where am I, I'm sorry. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay, so if your heels are, I'm gonna back pedal a little bit. If your heels are coming off the ground, calf stretches, we talked about those. Two exercises I wanna talk about too. I somehow got through that. Um, single leg toe touch. I'm gonna to have my toes point forward. Make sure that your knee is in line with your toes. You're gonna to take your opposite hand. Make sure you're not gonna fishtail with this leg. You want it to go straight back. So on my opposite hand, go down, touch your toes, come all the way back up. Whenever I do this one with kids or people who are in a hurry, they'll just go down, come part way up, back down. Make sure you go all the way up, find your balance, and come back down. Um, these exercises, even if you don't have this problem, I would recommend if you are interested in takedowns and throws, this will help you with your balance. And guard passing, I feel it's really helpful for, for balance as well. And just in general, I, I think balance is something people don't work enough. Okay, moving. Lower back arching. 
All right, if you're getting too much this way. Ah, I see. You're gonna do the hip flexor, uh, like I showed. Um, the lats also tend to be an issue here. All right, so to do the lats, and this is a major problem area for me, we're gonna use a foam roller. Uh, it's hard to use the hyper volt on yourself, but if you can get someone to do it for you, um, you have to kind of lay on your side. But I'm gonna sit it up this way, have my hand above my head, right? And usually, just kind of get in here, it, it, you're gonna feel it right away. Um, it, it's hard to see, but you wanna make sure you're not down here. It's just below your armpit, and I'm really only going about two, maybe three inches from there. If you're on your rib cage, you've gone too far down. All right, so once I sit up here, I'm gonna lean a little bit back. I'll change angles too. When I sit it up here, I'm gonna lean a little bit back. If I already feel it, just stay here. You can use your foot to help lift your hip off the ground to get more pressure. I would also recommend changing the angle of your arm, either bringing it down or higher, bringing it to the other side of your head, um, turning your arm, you'll feel a lot of different angles on your, uh, on your lap muscle there. So now the foam roller I think, think work, works best for that one. Okay, the erector spina as well. All right, so the foam roller works great for this. One thing I wanna talk about here is when you get to your lower back. So start, I like to start kind of in my mid back or my upper back. Um, and usually I'll get a couple of pops in my spine, that's totally fine. Right, but as I get to my lower back, I want to keep my core nice and tight. I don't want to drape like this over the, the roller, right? It's not getting the muscle necessarily. It's getting more of a, an angle in your spine. Um, we're looking to target the muscle. So I'm going to keep my core engaged so that I don't kind of drape over the, the, the roller. All right, so I'll kind of start up towards the upper shoulders and roll back towards the lower back down to here. So that's a good one to do. For the exercises, um, honestly, in my opinion, pick your favorite ab exercise. If, if you need some, uh, some help picking one, the one I would recommend for this, feet on the ground, hands on your thigh, don't let your palms come off the ground. Just try to get your fingers over your knees. It looks really easy, I promise you it looks really easy, but if you do it, Nice and slow, you're gonna feel a burn in your abs. So here, bring your hands over your knees and getting about 15, 20 repetitions that way. But again, there's a lot of good core exercises. That's the one I would recommend if you don't know where to start. And the last one for lower back, uh, the ball squats that we talked about, the uh, bridges, and also a floor bridge. So the, the, the exercise bridge versus a jiu-jitsu bridge or a wrestling bridge or a gymnastics bridge, the exercise bridge that we're looking for is a little bit different. I'm gonna, um, so for jiu-jitsu, I reckon usually bring my feet in close so I can get as high as possible, right? But for exercise, especially if you start adding weights, that's not the optimal length for a muscle. So, I want to bring it um, maybe like half a foot forward from my hips. I don't want it too far out either. My foot should be flat against the ground. I want to be able to bridge again, squeezing through the glutes and getting up nice and high here. So a little bit different from what we would do for jujitsu. Another option for that one. Uh, if your lower back is rounding, um, foam roll your hamstrings, stretch out your hamstrings. You want to do the, this is called the, the Magnus stretch. Uh, that's gonna be hard to remember. The way I would remember it is the, the Captain Morgan stretch. Ideally, you wanna use like a, a chair or a box or what have you, but you'll just put your foot on some, hopefully something a little more sturdy and reach down from here, okay? Captain Morgan stretch, step on it like your Captain Morgan and reach down for your toes. If your lower back is rounding, I would also do an abdominal stretch 
or the cobra pose. So going down into a prone position, hands by your chest, pushing off the ground. Make sure you're not squeezing your glutes. You want to keep that uh, unclenched, let's say. So that's the cobra stretch. Those are the three that I would recommend. Uh, we have hamstrings, the Captain Morgan stretch, and uh, abdominal stretching. For the exercises, if your lower back is rounded this way here, uh, we have the cobra exercise, so not the stretch. The way I would do that, going down on the ground, I've had people make fun of me in the gym for this one, but who cares? I don't care. Hands at your side, chest off the ground, and back down. If you want to increase, you can also bring your toes off the ground. I believe Gumby does this one a lot in his warm-ups, and it's a great thing. We also have, you can do this on the ball as well. Getting it in, right at the hips, coming down, and bridging. All right, sorry, sorry. Arching. Um, one thing to note on this one, wider toes will give you a sturdier base. Bringing your toes together will challenge your balance. So depending on where you're at, so if you want to uh, challenge your balance a little bit more, bring those toes closer together. If you just want to work on that lower back, keep, keep a wider base. Okay. Going into the forward lean. All right. Uh, we talked about a lot of these already. We talked about all of them. The calves, we want to do hip flexors and the abdominals. All right. Uh, the main exercise, so if you are leaning too far forward, the main exercise is going to be doing the, the wall squat with the ball. Okay. We're almost there. Arms fall forward. This is a big one for me. And I'm guessing if you're doing jujitsu for any length of time, this is going to be a big one for you as well. Um, if you're experiencing a lot of shoulder pain, uh, th this might help with that as well. Um, so rolling the lats, uh, like we talked about, and elongating or stretching the lats. So feet shoulder width apart, hand on your side, and reaching over. A common mistake I see with this one, people kind of, kind of uh, lean forward. I'll change this angle so I can face the microphone. I don't want to be coming forward here. So making sure that your body is in line with your feet, not falling forward. It's a, in essence, as good of a posture as we can, trying to stretch that muscle. So that's going to be a super important one. You also want to do the pecs, the chest. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to change angles on this one. Um, for foam rolling, ooh, that's a tough one. Uh, you want to get a lacrosse ball, right? You're going to find a pillar or, or something. There's a lot of uh, good angles at the uh, Heroes uh, Gym. Um, but you want to find a pillar, put this right on where your chest muscle connects into your shoulder. So there's a bit of a pocket right here that you want to put this in. If you have the hyper roll, it's super easy. You just turn it on, put it there. And get that angle. Again, if you're driving a lot uh, or you're at the desk, you might also see this shortening of this muscle, your chest pulling in your shoulders, right? This will help you uh, loosen it up and uh, uh, get us into a more proper posture. I'll change the camera angle. I want to get this pillar in the action. Um, if you can use this in a doorway, you can do this with the angle here. You're only limited by your creativity. I'm not gonna grab it. I'm gonna put it right on my wrist here. So I'm not grabbing anything. I'm putting my wrist on the platform. Next, um, the proper angle. My, my hand should be at my shoulder length and my elbow should be just below that, right? I wanna be here and not here. So the angle is gonna be very important. Also, you want to have your shoulders down and back. So you're pinching your shoulder blades together and try to put your shoulder blades down in your back pocket. If you're here, you just allow yourself to rotate and this will help elongate the muscle. All right? If you don't have that, um, you can also use the ground. 
So I'm gonna lay flat here, kind of keeping that similar angle that we talked about. I'll, I'll change angles in a moment. Um, and taking a back step with this leg here, right? Um, the only problem with this one is if your chest is super tight, this might be a bit much. All right, changing angles. The, the angle of this arm is super important. I don't want it down or too high up. In line with my shoulders, taking a back step. And that'll help get that stretch in the pecs. All right. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about today. I uh, have some homework for you. Um, so you want to screen your overhead squat as best as you can. If you're a visual learner and you don't have a, a, a mirror, you can, you can use your phone. And if you want, you, you can send it to me. I can give you a couple of notes and we can talk more about that. Um, but do your overhead squats, see what problems you're having, and then kind of pretty much as a plug and play after that. You're gonna take the exercises that we went through today um, based on the problems that you have and go from there. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask. I'll check the chat. I'll, I'll try to figure that out. Um, or send, send a message and we'll go off of that. I can't see anybody on YouTube but I can see everyone on Zoom. All right. The last thing I wanna talk about is after you figure it out, then, then do it, right? I would recommend three to five sets, uh, 15 to 20 repetitions, and anywhere between three to five days a week, right? So three to five reps, uh, three to five sets, 15 to 20 repetitions, anywhere between three to five days a week, depending on what you need. Um, so that's all I got for you guys today, and I hope you enjoyed. All right. And then, one, two. Bye, guys.